something. In this city, we believe in fairness. We believe working people deserve fairness. We want to be the fairest big city in America. We want to be a place where everyone who works hard is treated with dignity and lives a decent life. But meanwhile, Washington, D.C., they have literally the opposite agenda. President Trump and his cabinet of millionaires and billionaires are trying to take away your rights. The Republican Congress is trying to take away your hard-won rights. The Koch brothers are trying to buy elections so they can strip you of your rights. It's this simple. Are we going to let them do it? Are there more of us than there are of them? So now we fight the one percent has gotten away with it for too long. But all over this country, including all these rallies happening today, people will not stand for it anymore. So here's what I say. We are going to join in this effort to sway the Supreme Court. Now, I've got no illusions about the Supreme Court. Not a single one. But New York City will stand with labor and demand the Supreme Court respect the rights of labor all over this country. And if anyone asks you what has labor meant to New York City, we are a city today. We are the strongest we've ever been. We've had the most jobs we've ever had. We are the safest in our entire history because of working men and women who made this city great. I don't want to be selfish. That's what I am now. We've got the evidence that a union town is a better town for everybody. My mom is in Atlanta. Oh, she went, yeah, she just went down, she went down, she went down there for the whole month. Ahead. And this year, 2018, um, is going to be one so, of the most um, momentous so in the history of our country. Yeah, surgery. So Not just because of a Supreme Court decision, so we're going to fight either way. Whatever the Supreme Court does, we're going to fight. We're going to fight for change all over this country. Let me tell you something. We see the change happening already. We saw it in Virginia. We saw it in Alabama, brothers. I saw you that day in the street, and I had my phone to call. Oh my God, I saw it. We saw it like, in the women's march, the biggest demonstration in the history of this country. And if you want hope for the future, think about these high school students who are taking the lead in Florida and all over the country. safer country for all. <laughs> so, I want to say this to conclude. Yo, you know, Kay's the young... Well, you probably know, because you've been searching them through social media, but you know he's the assistant coach for the South. Look! I want to say to the 1%, and, um, I want to tell the 1%, this is as good as it's going to get for you, because now the people are taking back what's theirs. Tomorrow they got their playoff game. This fight grow and grow, and the fairness that we want to build in this city, we're going to build all over this country because working men and women will demand it. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to make it up there because my oldest got something for track, but I'm gonna say it really quick. In Espanol, he basically coaches the team. Nueva York, Hey guys, this is Flood. I'm at the uh, Union Protest uh, from uh, uh, DC 37, one of the biggest union in New York City. And uh, the mayor just spoke out. Uh, he's going to protect the union of this, for this city because it's very important because it could affect everyone with 
uh, no union, maybe no jobs, or no benefits. That's what could, could end up being. Who knows? There's a case called Janus versus AFSCME. Okay? And uh, where they decide where the union stays the way it is or it's going to affect us. Okay? I'm supporting it. All right. All right, take care, guys. Um, I'm going to tell you a personal story. Um, 
on why we should stand up and stick together and keep you here strong. At 5.30 in the morning, one cold January in 2013, my family and I were woken up and I was put my sleep in my Bronx apartment as we heard loud banging on the door. My wife opened the door and five armed men pushed their way into my apartment, confining me and my wife into the living room. As they made their way to the other bedrooms, <laughs> causing loud commotion going through my personal, as, as they searched through my personal belongings, they woke up and frightened my children, who at that time were the age of 11 and 9. My children began to cry as the strangers to them told them to stay where they were. Once I was handcuffed is when the strangers identified themselves as U.S. officers of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, the very building right next to me. My family cried as I was taken away. For the past five years, my family and I have been living through a terrifying nightmare as the government began deportation proceedings for a mistake I committed 20 years ago as a youth, and a mistake that I dearly paid for. I was brought over to the United States as an infant from Panama. New York is the only home I've ever known. I am a lawful permanent resident and a civil servant worker for the City of New York Parks and Recreation. I didn't know what I would do if I got deported. It would have broke up my family, which is my life, and destroyed me completely. My daughter now, 16, wants to become a lawyer one day, and my son, 14, has inspirations of a Korean law enforcement. It took a long time, but I was lucky to find the Immigration Defense Project who were committed to helping me stay in this country. They were smart and worked hard on my behalf, connecting me with great lawyers who believed in my case. I also belong to a union that stood up for me and my family. They testified for me at the city council and enlisted the support of officials. As a member of the union, my DC 37 brothers and sisters and members of the 32BGJ came to my legal proceedings. I was not alone. Also with the support of my parks agency in the Bronx, who are my work family, I was very fortunate to have such a great support system. Last September, after nearly five years, the government, ICE, stopped proceedings against me. The atmosphere that we are living in now, there are far too many examples of hardworking people being detained and deported out this great country. I'm here to thank leaders such as the DC 37 Executive Director Henry Carrillo, Local 983 President Joe Paleo, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., and Carlos Mancheca of the New York City Council, and our Governor and Mayor for standing up. So I'm here today to remind all of you that you must stand up if we are going to win the good fight. Thank you and God bless. And now, give a warm welcome to our final speaker today, Anthony Harmon, New York City Chapter Chair of the NAACP. A people united will never be defeated. A people united 
united will never be defeated. A people united will never be defeated. A people united will never be defeated. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Anthony Harmon, and I'm president of the New York branch of the NAACP. And I just stopped by today just to remind you that we stand with you in your struggle. Labor rights are civil rights. Civil rights are labor rights. Dr. King told us that our lives begin to end the moment that we keep silent about the things that matter. The moment we keep silent about the things that matter. And what matters to us, brothers and sisters? Education, public safety, health, affordable housing, an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. Those are the things that matter to us. Those are the things that matter to us. We also want to recognize some of the elected officials that stopped by today who didn't get an opportunity to speak, but I just want to let you know who was in the house today. Eric Adams, Brooklyn Borough President, was here. Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, was here. Nick Perry, Assemblyman, was here. Joanne Simon, Assemblywoman, was here. We also had some representatives from Beth. Wayne Smith was scheduled to speak, but a little under weather today and couldn't be here. But for all those people, all those members of Beth, your president sends his regards. Councilmember Donovan. Councilmember Levine, Councilmember Traeger, Senator Brian Benjamin, Senator Peralta, Senator Kavanaugh, Public Advocate Tish James, Controller Scott Stringer, Congresswoman Maloney, Tom DiNapoli, Senator Diane Savino. Those were our elected officials that joined with us today. Let's give a round of applause to all of them. They couldn't speak, but they wanted to let you know that they stopped by and they support us in the movement. Martin also reminded us, reminded us that the same enemy that attacks labor is the same enemy that attacks our civil rights. And we need to be smart about it, and we need to always, as we say, follow the money. Follow the money, and you'll see that that same enemy is not only an enemy to labor, but also an enemy to the civil rights movement. And that's why we're here to tell you, union busting is disgusting. disgusting. What's disgusting? Union busting. Union busting is disgusting. Yeah. What's disgusting? Union busting. Union busting is disgusting. What's disgusting? Union busting. Brothers and sisters, when I say union, you say strong. Union. 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 Strong. This is what democracy looks like, brothers and sisters. Solidarity forever. Thank you all for coming out. <laughs> so much for protesting today. I'm at Starbucks, uh, just relaxing right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people. I appreciate the debate that everybody came out. You know, that I'm glad that Paul participated with my free time to just um, you know, be part of this uh, rally. This is important. The union goes, everybody can be affected as well. So it's important that um, everybody stick together. And I heard that there's about 40,000 members in the union. If I heard it right, and uh, I heard it correctly, you know, as far as within this state. Believe, you know, uh, a dumb millionaire gives him about eighty million dollars in raises. He, he's a top executive for a cable company, and then uh, there are people who are on strike for eleven months who need money, who need food, who needs to take care of their family, things like that. They are ridiculous. If I was like a multi-millionaire myself. I would give myself 10% of and 
make sure these workers get that 10%. And that's why I it. probably make me popular, but it doesn't matter. And um, what's important, everybody gotta eat, everybody gotta sleep, you know. Can't be homeless, too many homeless people. It makes me sick to see so many homeless people out here. And, um, you know, it's, it's very heartbreaking. I can't give my whole picture to these people because it's not easy to deal with, you know. So, you know, so once in a while it give us uh, some change here and there, but I can't do it every day. I got, I got to eat too. I got to sleep as well. You know? um, as you can see, I have a, uh, this union hat, DC 37, that was given by my union uh, people to uh, go to come, come to the rally, put this uh, uh, hat and then a button, which I did not put on, you know, that says DC 37. And uh, took one play photographs, took some videos. I'm very surprised to see the NWACP uh, uh, member came over to speak at the rally. There were some uh, politicians who could not make it for some reason. One of them was under the weather. I understand it. it we had crazy weather, being warm and cold. And um, so far, you know, you know, the main thing, you know, just like the uh, NWACP said, our union rights is our civil rights. Our civil rights is our union rights. And you didn't mention all uh, things about uh, Martin Luther King, uh, how we should look at it that way, you know, as far as how companies should stick together. And, uh, and uh, the, the rep for the uh, cable company, the union for the cable company said, they think about uh, going the offensive to have cable uh, more like, you know, not for the, these rich people where they can make more money out of us and say, you know, we don't, we don't make enough money. And everybody knows cable uh, itself, the cable service is very expensive. One person told me it cost them over $200 a month. And it would advertise 80 or 90 bucks a month for your first year. It's crazy, you know? It's just going crazy. So, anyway, you know. I'm glad I was here, you know, at Photo Square, Manhattan, New York City. And uh, I know it's a little noisy, I'm inside of Starbucks, so. And I uh, thought it was important to speak about it. I will be editing and putting things together, you know, and hopefully it comes out not uh, great, you know? Alright, alright, this is Flood, signing off, peace out.